All right, today we're spilling the tea with the 20 web design resources for 2025 that'll level up your workflow faster than your client can say, I have a couple design changes in mind. They're all totally, or at least mostly free, so save this video to watch later so you don't lose these absolute gold mines. First up is UIverse.io, and if you're looking for any sort of buttons, animations, or elements, but your Figma file's looking like a big gray abyss at the moment, then this is for you. You just find one you like, scroll past all the code that we don't know how to read, and hit copy to Figma down here, and you're good to go. I am dog shit when it comes to making logos, which is why I like Logo System so much. They have a really cool library of logos to scroll through, and honestly, even the backgrounds that some people pick are just really interesting to scroll through and look at. So if you're ass with logos like me, definitely consider saving this one. Three, phase. Now I know in the past there have been some plugins that let you animate your Figma designs, but this is where it's at. It's way easier to do it on this platform and it's just so much better. If we take a look at their editor, it's actually shockingly similar to Figma's and I've already used it to animate uh, just a couple things here and there and it's been just so much easier to use than something like After Effects. I've said it before and I will say it again, beginner designers are pretty awful when it comes to pairing fonts together. Who are we kidding? I'm pretty dog shit too. Which is why Fontroy will do it for you. According to their How It Works page, they actually took a ton of different fonts and mapped them out on a 3D plane just so that all of us designers can sit there, press one button, and get a custom font pairing without having to do anything. Nukes ain't an option. Sure they are, but it's uh... No! I don't actually know how they pull off this sweet bento grid, but however they do it, this is all of the trending and top designs that are ripped straight off of Twitter. I'm not calling it X. And I gotta say, some of these are crazy. Like, how, how do they do that? How do they do this? Anyways, crazy site. It's like Dribble, but on steroids. There's some really cool stuff on here. It's not just design. There's branding and 3D effects on here. Just some sweet stuff. I don't know if you've seen many or any of my videos, but in a nutshell, it's basically me just bitching about how I'm really bad at designing logos. And Logo Ipsum solves all of those problems. I'm from now on literally just gonna come in here and steal one of these, okay? But the best part, the best part is this animation. Oh my God, watch this, okay? Oh, isn't that amazing? That is beautiful. I wish I came up with that. That is awesome. Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked here. Great website. If you suck at logos as much as I do, this is another great resource. Check it out, logoipsum.com. I didn't want to be basic and put something like Pexels or Pixabay in here because I'm sure you've probably already heard of them. However, I did not know that Shopify had its own free stock photo site. It is, I would say, less extensive than Pexels, but probably better organized so it's easier to find things. Do with that what you will, but uh, in my opinion, you can never have too many stock photo websites. Next up is Derves, and this is probably a bit more of a niche tool to use, but I could totally see myself using this for something like a crypto or modern software as a service landing page. I have spent far too long on this website just playing around with these sliders. It is, it is good fun. Now, everyone's always going on and on about how 3D is going to be the next big thing, and they might be right. And in case they are, Endless Tools has some quirky and cool 3D resources that you can customize by yourself. Now, some of them can be a little bit limited, but they're always adding more, and just look at all the cool stuff that you can make. I love micro-interactions. Doesn't everyone? Admittedly, it is a bit of a niche subject, which is why Design Spells has gone ahead and curated all of the best micro-interactions from a ton of different brands. As you can imagine, with the million and billion dollar companies on here, they come up with some pretty inventive and cool shit. Okay, so this one's really cool. It's a collection of playlists put together by professional designers, so I guess if you're really trying to copy the pros, listen to their music. 
If we scroll to the bottom, it says that it's actually put together by Lottie Files, which I guess explains all of the crazy interactions on here. I just love all of these. I know we're only on number 12, but I gotta say it, this is probably one of my favorite design resources on this entire list. Probably because I'm just chronically in need of better display fonts, and they have some really cool ones on here. My only issue is that this whole site isn't bigger. There aren't that many fonts on here, and oh, I could scroll through this for days. Anyways, if you're interested, typefaces.today. Once again, a little more niche, but if you're looking for isometric icons, Isocons has just a ton of them. And the best part is they're all customizable. You can change if they're rounded or sharp and how fat the stroke is. But my favorite part is when you wanna go ahead and add one, you can just click on add to folder and it's gonna add it to your checkout folder at the top where you can see them all, customize them all. And oh, I'm just in love with this website. UX of AI does exactly what you think it does, because at some point, most of us will probably be designing with AI or in AI adjacent fields, so it's good to have a feel for it. As I'm sure all of you know, AI can be as smart as it is stupid sometimes. You probably know Reloom as an AI site builder, but they also have a ginormous Figma design kit. I am not kidding when I say that this thing is massive. I've counted it out and I think they have something like 54 pages in this Figma file filled to the brim with different sections and layouts and elements. It's actually nuts how big this thing is. I've listed the official Reloom site down below, but it's really just a Figma community file, so you can search for it on Figma without even needing to sign up to Reloom. Sometimes the gradients you make just aren't cutting it, which is where Photo Gradient comes in. They have just a stupid amount of presets and settings so that you can create an awesome mesh gradient all by yourself with just some, some clicks of a button, really. You definitely couldn't do all of this in Figma. You'd have to switch to either a tool like this or Photoshop, and why not just keep it simple and use something like this? And if you don't like the colors that you're currently working with, just go ahead and refresh the page and it'll give you a brand new color guide. Variety in a layout is everything, but sometimes it can be hard to find the right one. So instead of sitting there banging your head against the desk, come over to unsection.com. What they've done is taken a bunch of websites and chopped them up into each of their sections and made those sections searchable so you can come find what you're looking for and you're good to go. Next up is Design Sphere, and maybe this isn't the typical web design resource you were expecting, but I gotta say that if you're looking for any sort of really interesting web design podcasts, this is the place for you. On a crazy side note, check out this hover interaction. Like, I know it's pretty straightforward, but holy, they did a good job implementing that. I've actually been listening to Honest UX Talks while I've been designing for the past month or so, and it's been really good so far. Okay, now, I don't know about you, but I like my arrows. I use my My Designs, I use them in my videos, and Handy Arrows has some pretty serious variety when it comes to arrows. Figma's pencil tool really only gets you so far, so if you have an obsessive need to use arrows, like me, this is your one-stop shop. Now, there are plenty of portfolio showcase websites out there, but what I really like about Wall of Portfolios is that they break down the experience of the designer, and you can also see where they're from and the kind of work that they do. This definitely helps put into perspective their portfolio when you view it, and maybe you won't compare yourself quite as much to a professional with like 15 plus years of experience who have worked with all of these brands, hopefully. And that is everything I have for you guys today. All 20 links will be listed in the description down below, along with a link to join my design community with over 13,000 designers in it. If you made it this far and you don't absolutely hate my humor, consider subscribing, but other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.